Altering Curve Resolution. In this video, we're going to be culling unnecessary geometry. Now we've kept the curve data itself, so we actually have two options in this case. We can recreate our mesh object from those curves, or we can fiddle about with the geometry itself. So, which path to take? Well, both are okay. It does depend on the stage of construction you're at, and we're right at the beginning this time. And in fact, we'll be altering the curve resolution and the mesh itself to tidy it up and of course after we've done that we're going to tidy up the rest of the geometry as well just to make it a little bit easier to work with. So let's hop straight on over into Blender. Right so looking at the base that we've currently created as you can probably see there's an awful lot of uh, faces here. In fact there's in my opinion far too much detail in this model. I mean it's absolutely fine as a model goes but if we in any mesh object that you have if you hop over into edit mode we can actually see the number of triangles that it is and it's uh, 4700 just in the base and I think that's a little over the top especially as we can employ other techniques later to smooth it out if necessary. Now we have a couple of options in which to do this basically um, and we're going to first of all modify the curve that we've done and recreate our lamp base. So the first thing we'll need to do here is go and alter the curves. Now first of all I'm going to unchild them by clicking on the icon, that's important, not the name, but the icon itself. Moving to the left and we see it there, it says drop to clear parent. I'm just going to do that there. So now that's um, removed from our mesh itself, I'm just going to hide the mesh for the moment, bring it out of the view um, by clicking on this eye just here. And of course we can't hide that until we're not editing it. So let's go back into object mode and just hide the lamp base. And of course nothing's changed here because we've still got our curve based object just here. So let's go to the curve outline, which is this one over on the left hand side. I'm just going to widen my view here, turn off the tool shelf, probably bring this in just a little, not completely, but just a little. There we go. So in the curve properties, this data section here that we've been working on before, uh, we can change this resolution. So we can see it's currently set to 12 and we can see what type of effect it has. So let's tone that down a little because this resolution actually controls how many vertices are made once this is converted into an object itself. So with one we end up with well, a very angular model as you can see there. In fact, what I'm going to do at this point is turn on, or rather off, smooth shading. If we go to flat, we can actually see how things are working out. Let's go here, flat shading. That gives us a much better idea. So I needed to select the base curve at the top here before in the tool shelf, clicking flat shading. Now we can see what's really happening underneath of the underlying geometry and let's go back to our outline curve. So as we increase that, we will see our model changing. As we can see, at a certain point, we were at 12 before, it ends up quite smooth. And as we go back again, we can get an appreciation of at what, which point we no longer need to go. So at the moment, it looks like four or five, um, or maybe even six. I'm going to go for five in this case because I think it defines the shape well enough. And of course we've got the Bezier circle as well. Now because this has four points on it and it's got a resolution of 12, that actually makes a, a circle of 48 segments, which is four times 12. Now usually a 24 or 32 makes a good number of segments for a circle to keep it smooth when you look at it. So let's just see um, if we set it to 6, which would be 24. Um, I think that might still end up looking a tiny bit jagged. So I'm going to just up that to 8, which will equal the 32, because I'm quite happy with it being 32. I know that's going to produce a nice smooth circle type shape. Brilliant, so that's now done that, and now all we need to do is change these curves once again into a mesh object. Okay guys, it's challenge time. I'd like you to lower the triangle count of the base. 
So we're going to lower the resolution of the curves to an appropriate amount. Now we've already done some of that in the previous um, explanation about lowering those, uh, but I would like you to experiment with it, see how low you can go without losing the definition of the shape. I would like you to create a mesh object from the new lower res curves. And then finally, once that mesh object is created, you're going to find that there are some faces within the hole itself. So I'd like you to remove the extra geometry from within the hole, and I recommend using bridging edge loops for that. So go pause the video now and give that a go. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's hop back on over into Blender. Okay, so over in Blender, I'm quite happy with the resolutions that I've picked of 8 for the actual circle, the defining circle, and the Bezier curve itself. I'm happy with 5. I think that gives enough definition for us. So I'm going to click on the base curve itself and go and press Alt and C and make a mesh from the curve objects. Brilliant, we've got all that there. I'm going to keep the original, of course that will make it disappear. So we hop into the undo history, go down to where we switched into edit mode, I think that's where it was. Excellent. And repeat the task again, and this time we will keep the original, because I do want to keep those curves, just in case something like this happens. I'm going to immediately set the parent object as this new one, and I'm going to call this lamp base, and I'm quite happy now with deleting the old one. But we can see the difference there. One smooth shaded, so that's not a very fair comparison, so let's turn on smooth shading. And we can see that the difference between that and that is not that much at all. Brilliant. So I'm happy to delete the lamp base, or in the process of preserving stuff, I will hide it from view and everything else that's not being rendered. And I'm going to shift it up and nestle it all the way under, uh, it's called base curve at the moment, but this will become the new lamp base. And therefore we've not lost anything in case I want to use that again later on. Okay, so now that we've got our mesh object there, I'm going to hop on over into edit mode. And I'm quite happy with the level of detail that's here because it keeps the curves. That's absolutely fine. The base looks like it's got a few extra bits that are unnecessary, so we can remove a couple of the edge loops that are going around there. It's not going to be deformed. So let's do that first because that's going to be the easiest one to deal with. I'm going to get rid of our backdrop so we can actually see the base of our object. And I'm going to select with edge selector, and I'm going to select these edge loops whilst holding down shift as well. Oh, selected the wrong one sometimes happens. Let's just start again, select that edge loop there, that one, that one I'm going to zoom in so I don't uh, muck that one up. There we go. So I'm happy with that and I'm going to... I'm going to have to leave actually the inside one because these stop here in a point. So I'm just going to select that one, that one and that one there. That's fine. So going to delete the vertices there so I want that completely gone and now I'm going to select this edge here and this edge on the inside and go and search for bridging edge loops I'm going to use the space bar to bring that up and bridge edge loops there we go so we've got a nice flat bottom going on there. There appears to be a bit of a geometry, funny bit of geometry going on. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Uh, there may be something else still turned on. Let's go and have a look. There doesn't appear to be. Um, that's a funny artifact going on there. Let's see if there's any extra geometry. So I'm going to highlight the entire model and remove doubles just to see. Okay, that's removed 30 vertices, which is useful especially when we're trying to lower the, lower the triangle count. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So I've had a look at the model and it's unbelievably simple what's gone on. Well, I've still got my curve object actually visible. I thought I'd turned it off, but I obviously haven't. So let's go and do that now. Uh, if we go down here, the base outline and the base curve are still showing. That's going to confuse even me at this point. So there we go. Now we found out what's causing that. 
we can go in and go back to our mesh object we should be able to see the inside that's what I was expecting to see and I'm literally going to fill this outside face there we go that's the bottom bit sorted now up here we have a series of faces running around here that aren't necessary it's a single tube uh, we don't need all that extra geometry because it's not deforming or changing shape around that. So let's go in and I'm inside the model now as you can see I've zoomed in enough so I can see inside the model and that's exactly where I want to be because I want to select in face select I want to select this face loop here, this one here, this one here and that's it. I don't want to select the top or bottom one because when I delete the vertices it'll actually delete these faces at the top and bottom as well. So when I go X and delete the vertices it's actually left us with this here which is brilliant because at the top we can select that edge loop there and then we can bridge the edge loops again and that creates far less geometry. In fact we're now down to only well, just under 800 triangles, and that's a huge drop from what we were on before. Excellent. How did you guys get on? Please share in the discussions, and I will see you in the next lecture.